Right, you guys want to know the differences, so let's break it down. This is the XDJ XZ versus the Denon DJ Prime 4. In this video, we're gonna break down the key things you need to know about the Pioneer DJ XDJ XZ and the Denon DJ Prime 4. We're gonna add a little bit of my own experiences playing with both units, but this isn't a buyer's guide. You should know by the end of this which one will suit you best, so you go out and buy what's best for you. Don't use this as a guide to know which one's better than the other, because as you'll see, there's some major differences between the two units. Starting with price. The Pioneer DJ XDJ XZ starts at $18.99 in the UK, whereas the Denon DJ Prime 4 starts at $16.40. The Pioneer XDJ XZ has a 4 channel mixer at its heart, it's what separates it from the older RX2 unit. This means we have four line inputs, four phono inputs and an auxiliary channel input as well at its mixer. If you'd like to use the inbuilt USB ports, there's two of them, so you've got two USB ports for its internal playback, you can only use two channels. The Prime 4 however has a four channel mixer as you'd expect. We have four line inputs, two of them switchable to phono for turntable use. But if you want to use the internal player on the device, you can use the two USB slots, the SATA hard drive bay, or the SD card slot, and you can play across all four channels. On top of this, the Prime 4 carries Wi-Fi built in and you can connect wirelessly to a streaming partner of your choice and stream songs directly into the player and DJ across all four decks with that streaming partner. The XZ on the other hand doesn't have any internet capability and therefore doesn't have any streaming to offer. On the audio output, the XZ carries two XLRs for its master output as well as a pair of unbalanced RCAs. There's a booth output on TRS jacks and a send output on TRS jacks and that's for using the DJS1000 sample player with this unit. The Denon Prime 4 also carries a pair of XLRs and unbalanced RCAs for its master but also adds two more XLRs for its booth and two more XLRs for its zone output meaning you can actually play completely different music to a different area or a different set of speakers on this unit, a feature that's not available in the XZ. Moving on to microphones. Both units are very similar in this aspect. Both carry two channel microphones on combi jacks, that means you can use a TRS jack or an XLR cable. And both of these channels carry three band EQ. The only difference is that where the Denon carries an echo control, so you can add a bit of reverb to your voice, the Pioneer carries an anti-feedback solution instead, which can be adjusted between low and high to stop uh, feedback from speakers or booth monitors. Moving on to effects, a area where Pioneer DJ stereotypically always dominate with great sounding effects. The XZ is no exception to this. We have six color effects with parameter control. We also have 14 beat effects taken directly from a DJM 900 Nexus 2 mixer. These have an X pad and three band EQ control and they sound fantastic. The Denon DJ Prime 4 on the other hand carries four color effects on the mixer without parameter control and then 14 beat effects which are lifted from the X1800 Prime series mixer. For me, the Pioneer effects have always sounded that bit nicer, but it is nice to have more control over the effects with the Denon. Now both these units feature link ports on the rear. The link port on the Denon DJ Prime 4 is for use with a wired internet connection in case you don't have Wi-Fi to use the streaming, or you can connect external devices for lighting control. These are like Resolume, Timecode, and Sound Switch. You cannot link other Denon Prime players into this unit at the moment. The Pioneer XDJ XZ has three LAN ports on the rear for linking in two additional players. These can be XDJ 1000s, a variety of CDJ units, or the DJS 1000 sample player. It also has an extension LAN port on the back that can be used for external devices and also your laptop in Rekordbox export mode. Note this is how you would get use out of the two extra channels found in this mixer. You can connect in the uh, corresponding CDJs via this link connection and all your BPMs will sync up. The internal effects unit can read the BPM from those decks and it's almost like you've created a big four deck setup from just this and some external CDJs. The Denon Prime 4 carries eight RGB pads at the bottom of each deck. These can be used for hot cues, loops, rolls, slicer, slicer loops and auto loops. 
The XDJ-XZ also carries eight RGB pads, but these can be only used with hot cue, beat loop, slip loop, and beat jump. So the Denon Prime 4 actually has more capability in its performance pads. Not only this, the Denon Prime 4 is capable of pitch shifting your tracks on the unit itself, something that the DJ-XZ is not capable of doing. Moving on to the jog wheels. The Pioneer DJ XDJ XZ has fantastic adjustable mechanical 8 inch jog wheels with white LED ring around the outside and a color LCD screen in the middle. These are taken directly from the DDJ 1000. That unit itself taking the mechanical jog wheels from the CDJ 2000 Nexus 2s. That basically means that you've got the best jog wheels in the business right here. They feel great and it's what every DJ would want to play on. The Denon DJ Prime 4 uses a 6 inch capacitive jog wheel rather than the mechanical ones found in the XZ. This means that it feels more like a controller than a CDJ if you've ever played on either units. It uses the static in your fingers to detect when you're touching the platter rather than the actual force used by the Pioneer units. They do however feature a colour LCD screen in the middle and full colour ring around the outside which can be changed to a colour of your choice. These units are not adjustable however, and I always find when using the Prime 4 that they're too loose. It's a personal preference, not every DJ will feel the same, but I would much rather use the jog wheels found on the Pioneer unit than those on the Denon Prime 4. An area where Denon DJ are bigger though, and better, is in the screen. This is a 10 inch, high resolution, high refresh, multi-touch display. It feels much like a screen that you get on your iPhones, on your mobile phones, you can multi-touch it so you can pinch and zoom your waveforms, you can slide to load your songs in, and you can view all four waveforms on this one screen. The Pioneer DJ XDJ XZ, however, uses a seven inch simple touch screen. It's color, but it's just a simple single touch touch screen found in the RX units. There's nothing wrong with this touchscreen, but you can only view two waveforms at once and put side by side, it's clearly a more dated and uh, far less elegant solution. Out of the two screens, you'd want this one all day long. And finally, whilst we're talking about size, the XDJ XZ is an absolute beast of a controller. Weighing in at 13 kilograms, compared to the Denon DJ Prime 4's 9.7 kilograms, this unit is not only wider, but taller. It's a lot heavier and neither of these solutions are portable but if you are thinking about taking these on the road this is not for moving about it is massive so finally let's talk about software pioneer xdj xz was released with serato capability advertised all over the box however it's not available till early 2020 that said it also lacks a lot of the dedicated hardware buttons to use it as a serato controller Things like switching between the deck layers are a lot more difficult at first glance on this unit than they are in, say, the Denon DJ Prime 4, which also, coincidentally, announced Serato support recently. But what other softwares can these both be used with? Well, this unit can be used with record box in performance mode or export mode, and can also be used in Serato in HRD mode. You can also use the two USB ports on the top to read your record box library from USB device or to play unanalyzed files that you've just simply dragged onto there. Note, you will not receive the BPM or waveform or any of the uh, cool quantization features. If you just play an unanalyzed file, you will have to run them through record box first. Then on DJ, on the other hand, you can plug this into Serato, as we mentioned. You can also plug it into Engine Prime, Denon's own software. But if you're to use the USB slot, hard drive, or SD card slot on the top of this unit, you can also read unanalyzed files, and the unit itself will analyze them, giving you the full waveform, BPM, quantization, and key information for the, for the player to be able to access advanced features. You can also use a record box USB, so you can use the same USB you'd use in here, you can use it in there, and it'll take a few seconds, but it will convert them all across. And it will also read uh, Serato libraries and native instruments tractors libraries as well from those USBs. Basically what that means for you is that unless you're using Rekordbox USBs, you're gonna to have to go download Rekordbox and analyze them to get the most out of the XZ. On the Denon Prime 4, you can rock up with almost any media, plug it in and away you go. And there we have it, the key differences and similarities between these two all-in-one four-channel juggernaut players. 
There are key differences. These aren't aimed at being a solution or a competitor to each other. The Prime 4 does basically do everything for you. You don't need a laptop, but if you've got one, you can plug it in. It is an absolute marvel of technology and what can be achieved. However, you know, it is cheaper and you can tell where they've cut the corners. It's way more advanced technologically. However, things like the jog wheels, the faders, the um, effects, they just don't have the same premium quality as the Pioneer XDJX said. And it's for that reason that I would buy a Denon DJ Prime 4 for at home. I, in fact, this has been at my home for the last few weeks. I absolutely adore having it at home. It gives me the opportunity to just jump on and have a play around and not have to worry about sorting out my record box USBs and all that kind of uh, stuff that you have to do with these uh, Pioneer units. But if I was going to a nightclub, if I'm going to a bar, I'd rather be playing in a more professional environment on these players. You can't underestimate things like the jog wheels, the faders, the um, effects, things like that in a professional performance matter. And as a DJ plays on Pioneer DJ products, majority of the nights I play, I'd rather see this in the DJ box and this when I get back home. But don't let that influence your decision. You've got to go out, try these units for yourself. If you're an avid Pioneer DJ fan, I can see why you might be disappointed expecting a rival unit to this. But you've got to acknowledge how good the quality of this unit is and how nice it's going to be rocking up to a DJ box in the future, finding one of these and being able to play on it, no matter if you're a record box user or a Serato user, getting the premium and the best elements from the best players in the world right there it's a game changer for Pioneer DJ's range, just as the Denon DJ Prime 4 is a game changer for what can be done in an all-in-one unit. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, make sure you give us a thumbs up. Let us know in the comments, which one would you buy? For more content just like this, make sure you subscribe to Crossfader's channel by hitting the button down below. Hit the bell icon so you're notified when new uploads go live, and we'll catch you in another video sometime soon. Thanks a lot.